My name is Elizabeth Kirk, and I direct the Center for Law and the Human Person at the Catholic University of America Columbus School of Law. I'm also an associate scholar at the Charlotte Lozier Institute, which specializes in in-depth scientific, legal, and scholarly research and education on the life issues. I want to address your question and respond to people who claim that Proposition 1 would not change existing California abortion law. Existing California law already protects abortion and guarantees public funding of it, largely through the state's Supreme Court, the state Supreme Court's interpretation of the existing constitutional privacy and equal protection provisions. But Prop 1 would protect abortion to an even greater extent than existing law. Why is this so? Well, when looking at what a constitutional amendment means, we have to look at its language. So bear with me. Proposition 1 says, quote, the state shall not deny or interfere with an individual's reproductive freedom in their most intimate decisions which includes their fundamental right to choose to have an abortion and their fundamental right to choose or refuse contraceptives. This section is intended to further the constitutional right to privacy guaranteed by section one and the constitutional right to not be denied equal protection guaranteed by section seven. Nothing herein narrows or limits the right to privacy or equal protection, end quote. So notice that there's nothing in the text of Prop 1 about current state law on abortion. So it doesn't say, for example, this section is intended to be interpreted consistently with existing state law on abortion. Instead, the language of the proposition says it is intended to further the constitutional right to privacy. The de dictionary definition of further is to extend or to help the progress or to promote. Those meeting, meanings suggest that the goal of Prop 1 is to expand current law, not to maintain the status quo. And to drive the point home, the last sentence of Prop 1 says, nothing herein narrows or limits the right to privacy or equal protection. Again, demonstrating that the proposition does not just preserve existing state law, but is meant to expand it. This language is categorical. It says the state shall not deny or interfere with reproductive freedom. Even under Roe and Casey, states were permitted to regulate abortion. For example, under those cases before viability, states could regulate the practice of abortion to ex express important state interests like protecting minors or ensuring the safe practice of medicine. And after viability under those cases, they were even permitted to prohibit abortion with some exceptions. But this proposition gives the legislature no such le leeway. It is a simple categorical prohibition. The state shall not deny or interfere with reproductive freedom. So this means that even existing restrictions on abortion, meager though they may be in California law, will likely be struck down under this constitutional amendment. So for example, supporters of Prop 1 seek to reassure Californians that current law bans late-term abortion and that this amendment will not change this. Now, lawyers debate whether it's true that current law meaningfully bans late-term abortions, but even if it does, nothing in Prop 1 provides a basis for the state to limit the availability of abortion in any way, including to ban late-term abortions. A constitutional amendment always trumps existing state laws, and it governs how state laws are interpreted. So there's nothing in the language of Prop 1 that even limits its application just to abortion or contraception access. Notice again the language. The language says that the state shall not deny or interfere with an individual's reproductive freedom in their most intimate decisions, which includes abortion and contraception. Includes does not mean limited to abortion and contraception. Those are two examples. 
So reproductive freedom could be interpreted to mean a whole host of other things, including sterilization, gender transition, drugs and surgeries, assisted reproductive, te assisted reproductive technologies, et cetera. A consistent talking point in California and around the country is that measures like Prop 1 will just codify Roe or protect existing law. One wonders why, if that's truly the case, supporters of Prop 1 are working so hard to pass it. The bottom line is it doesn't just do that. While it's true that California law already provides radical access to abortion, and we don't even really know the full extent of that because the state doesn't collect or report abortion data, the bottom line is that Prop 1, if passed, would enshrine into the California state constitution the greatest possible protection for reproductive freedom, trumping all state laws to the contrary and making it nearly impossible to regulate the abortion industry going forward. Thank you.